21-year-old migrant Mohammed Tahir Amini has been charged and arrested for raping and attempting to murder a woman outside of the small town of Avesta in Sweden this past weekend. Last Friday afternoon, a man was out on a walk in the woods when he heard a woman's cry for help. He suddenly realized the cries were coming from an abandoned hole in the ground that was 25 meters deep. He alerted the rescue services and shortly thereafter, they were on site to rescue the woman who had been pushed down the hole. Mohammed Tahir Amini was arrested on Monday, suspected of raping and attempting to murder the woman by pushing her down the hole. According to the Swedish news site Aftonbladet, Mohammed had proposed to the victim but was rejected. As a response, Mohammed attempted to murder the woman by pushing her down the hole. Mohammed Tahir Amini had received a coordination number by the Swedish authorities in September of 2019, but his identity has not been verified. Since 2019, Mohammed had been charged with petty crimes such as drug crimes and two cases of driving without a license, but he has yet to be deported. Mohammed's citizenship is at the moment unclear, but he has requested translation in Persian. Mohammed first applied for a residential permit in Sweden back in 2015. Two years later, Mohammed was denied and was supposed to be deported. But he managed to avoid deportation by appealing to both the Migration Court and the Migration High Court. However, he failed and was not able to obtain a residential permit in Sweden at the time. In 2018, the decision to deport Amini was yet again finalized, but it never actually happened. Instead, the Swedish Migration Agency decided one month ago in March to revisit Amini's request for residential permit in Sweden. All right, guys, so let's talk some Swedish issues, specifically when it comes to immigration. So the story that we're covering here is just another instance of uh, an immigrant from the Middle East or North Africa uh, coming to Sweden and not being able to fit into how we do things in Sweden. And just for uh, my own bias and reference, my sisters live in Sweden, uh, specifically in southern Sweden. And uh, so I do have a dog in this fight because I do want them to be safe, although they can't take care of themselves. You don't know what can happen. So attitudes in Sweden towards immigration were very positive back 10 years ago. Everybody like Swedish people are very nice. It's one of the countries, uh, one of the many uh attitudes in Europe that have shifted significantly from their past. So as you guys know, Vikings were some of the most violent uh, tribes that existed in Europe. Everybody who knows anything about European history knows that. They were not the only one. The British were also like that. The Spaniards were violent as well. Many, all, almost all of our ancestors from Europe and the rest of the world were violent, but the Vikings were very cruel. But Swedish society ha has gone the exact opposite from that since, I would say, 17, 1800s, Sweden started going very liberal. And that's a good thing. They accepted science. They became, they didn't want to engage any wars. They went in all the right directions, in my opinion. One area where they have gone in the wrong direction is when it comes to immigration. Now, you guys know um, I always operate based on facts. I never blame entire groups of people for the, uh, for the faults of a few. And this is one of those instances. But there is a problem here that we need to address. And even Swedish liberals are getting tired of the immigration. Okay. And that's, that's very simple. It's not because these people are particularly bad or some other nonsense like that. It's because there's a conflict in the culture. So people who come from Afghanistan, Iraq and Morocco and these places, they ha they see women in a very different light. And that's that is because of their culture. But more more than that, their religion, they just they just treat women uh, as second class citizens and as lower than men. That's part of their culture and their religion uh, in in specifically in the Middle East and North Africa. So when they come to a country like Sweden, they can't adapt to the way that we do things in the West. And America and Sweden are the same thing, but I have lived in Sweden, so I know how they operate. And Swedish women behave like a West, modern Western society. And some of these Muslim guys can't handle that. Okay, And some of them have, some, a minority, have criminal intent that, uh, that gets triggered and they end up attacking women, okay, and raping them or killing them, um, like happened in 2017. So this case happened recently where this guy um, basically um, asked this girl to marry him. She refused. He raped her and threw her down a well. That's what this story that you guys just saw was. Another thing happened which helped um, basically turn Swedish people, uh, sour them even more against immigration back in 2017 when there was a 
gang rape that was uh, televised on Facebook. They live streamed it. A bunch of, uh, I think they were Afghanis or Iraqis. Uh, they're immigrants and they raped a Swedish girl and they live streamed it. Okay. And that was covered widely in Sweden. Swedish people were shocked. So even though Swedish, Sweden in general has been become very liberal and open, they're starting to get sick. Even the bleeding heart liberals are starting to get sick of their women being attacked. Now, usually it's a right wing talking point that Swedish women are under attack. But but I'm saying it because I don't care what the right wing is saying. I, I think they're a bunch of clowns. Sveria uh, Demokrotna, which is Swedish Democrats, they're a bunch of clowns, in my opinion, conservative idiots. But they're right about this thing where a lot of Swedish women are being attacked. And I have the facts to back it up. So as of 2020... 58% of all of the sex crimes that were committed in Sweden, uh, according to BRO, which is a, which is an institution that tracks these crimes, uh, including the Swedish police, they found that most of the crimes that are committed against Swedish women, sex crimes that are committed against Swedish women are done by foreigners, not by natural born citizens. OK, so that's a fact. Now, people who don't who want to pretend like migrants are angels and they never do anything wrong they're not going to like that fact and they're going to pretend like I'm doing some kind of white supremacist stuff I'm not I'm giving you the facts with the conclusions you want to draw from that they're up to you but since 2017 since that gang rape happened the Attitudes in Sweden have been shifting. And I personally know a lot of Swedish people. Like I said, my sisters live there. I've lived there. And uh, they don't want Im immigrants coming in anymore. Okay. And that's just, that's reflected in the latest uh, poll. So this is from 2020. Dog and Snyatar, which is a very mainstream, non white supremacist uh, newspaper in Sweden. They did a poll uh, with Ipsos together. And they found that two out of three Swedes want to see a ceiling for the refugee reception into Sweden, as you guys can see. And this poll also found that three out of five Swedes want to basically limit immigration into Sweden. OK, so so that's a majority. More than 50 percent have now uh, have now turned against more uh, immigrants coming into Sweden. So to give you guys some context into why this is happening now, the reason the numbers are changing is because Sweden has been the biggest recipient of African and Middle Eastern immigrants uh, in the last 10 years. OK, Norway and Iceland and other countries have put in much more stricter controls into their immigration system. So they don't have the same kind of spike in crime and uh, sexual assault specifically happening in their country. It's only Sweden that's going through the roof. If you look at the other countries, not so much. Those countries also took in migrants from the Middle East and, and uh, North Africa. But the numbers of uh, the crime rise in their countries has not gone up as much as Sweden because Sweden just let anybody in because there's a lot of bleeding hearts in power in Sweden who want to be, like I said, very kind and open to people, which is fine. But you're screwing up your own country because of the fact that this this diversity thing that they want so bad to uh, to work, it doesn't work because there's too much difference between the cultures. And that's just an objective fact. Like you take, it's like t taking somebody from another planet and putting them in Sweden and expecting them to act like a regular Swedish person. It's not going to happen. Even an American would have trouble fitting in in Sweden. And I know people, expats, who went to Sweden and tried to live there for a long time. It's difficult, and I've been there too. Okay, so these are normal interactions, right? But but you know, people take these stats and try to twist them into their own narrative. Like I said in the beginning, none of this means that all immigrants are criminals. That would be wrong and statistically inaccurate to say. Okay, because most of the immigrants who are coming from these places, they're not turning into criminals. Okay, they do have a problem of not wanting to assimilate sometimes, but that's not the same as being a criminal. Okay, I want to talk specifically about criminality here. Now, there is that stat which I showed, or which I told you guys before, where most of the sex crimes that happen against Swedish women are by immigrants. Now, to me, as somebody whose number one priority is protecting Swedish women, we can't have that. Okay, uh, the 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 criminal justice system in Sweden is an embarrassment for aggravated rape. You get something like six to 10 years or somewhere around there. And for a, being part of a gang rape, you get two to six years or something. It's it is pathetic. You know what I think? If you rape a Swedish woman, you should be executed. That's what I think. OK, but Sweden, again, they become too much, uh, too much of bleeding hearts and they don't want to do executions. I think capital punishment is not even uh, legal at all in Sweden for any crime, even for treason. So. They should get some of that Viking blood back, okay? That that Viking courage ba back from the uh, from the, the old days when they actually used to kill the people who d who uh, didn't deserve it. So back then the Vikings were doing bad things like going into England and killing English women. Can't do that. Okay, that's wrong. Okay, now they've gone 
they become too goody two shoes to the point where they can't even kill the criminals that rape their own women. It's it's uh, like we've gone too far in the uh, goody two shoes direction, and that we need a little bit more bravery back in Sweden, in my opinion. So I don't care if it's a migrant or or a Swedish guy. You rape a Swedish woman, you die. Okay, that's will be the law if I controlled Sweden. Okay, unfortunately uh, for Swedish women, I don't run Sweden. It would be a much better place for them if I controlled it. But nevertheless, I have I'm not even a Swedish citizen, so I, I don't really have any say. Hopefully, in the uh, in the uh, near future, they go in a much more rougher direction with their criminal justice because too many cr- criminal. There's no way to teach them a lesson. They think, ah, oh, I'll just spend a couple of years in prison. I'll be back. And the prisons in Sweden are very comfortable too. Okay, that's another problem because there's no pu- there's not not any real punishment. Okay, there's very limited punishment. It's not enough at all. So you have to call, keep all the stats uh, in mind. You can't just say all immigrants are evil. That would be statistically inaccurate. And to say that would be a lie and you'd be a liar. Okay, I'm not going to do that because that's not true. I operate based on facts and evidence. And we have a we have a problem here in Sweden. And I think the solution is to stop uh, to, to do integration more to integrate the people that are there now. And if anybody doesn't want to integrate, you got to ship them out of there. Okay, and this criminal as you saw in the video, this guy was slated to be deported by one agency, but the court stepped in and stopped it. So the courts are filled with bleeding heart idiots who want to go easy on these criminals who are actually attacking people. Now, he hadn't attacked anybody yet, but he'd done robberies of a store. He drove without a license, which is not the biggest thing, but the robbing the store, that is a big thing. So he had a criminal history, but nevertheless, the court, the appeals court in Sweden refused to deport him. Okay. And that's why this woman was was killed, because the bleeding heart Swedish government refused to do something to stop this criminal. And that's the reason this woman died. So the last thing I have to say here is if you are uh, the, a, a part of the Christian Democrats or any uh, any of the other non right wing parties in Sweden, what I would say to you is stop denying this issue. Stop denying that there is a problem, an overwhelming problem with more minorities who are coming into Sweden doing sexual assault on Swedish women. If you keep denying this, you're going to lose more and more ground. Be more and more people are going to go to the Swedish Democrats, Svaria Demokratna. They're going to gain more and more followers. Okay, and they're rebranding themselves. They're no longer, you know, explicitly white supremacists. So it's more attractive to people. So if the liberals in Sweden want to keep their power at all in the next couple of decades, they have to stop ignoring this problem of violent migrants getting to getting not getting deported and staying in Sweden and committing crimes attacking Swedish women and they're the number one victims and but also there was a Swedish boy who was like 12 years old who was also raped which uh, which was a story that came out a couple of years ago I believe back in 2020 so it's not even just women although most of the people who are raped are women okay so those are the facts and people in Sweden have to decide what they want to do and we'll see what happens going forward but it's not looking good for at least Swedish women Okay, because they're the ones who are in danger because of the horrible policies of their of their government. And it's a shame. That's all I gotta say for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. See you guys in my next one. As always, peace. Good morning, Mega City One. You're listening to Mega City News, the top rating channel in the Big Meg. A big news network for the biggest city in the world. We cover all the news along the eastern coast of what was once called America. If it's worth knowing, we'll tell you what's happening. I'm Enigma Smith, and these are the headlines at midnight on April the 2nd for the year 2124. Good news! Unemployment in the Big Meg dropped by 1% this week. Bad news? 88% of the population are still jobless and claiming welfare. Good news? It's a year to the day since Friends Crime Syndicate boss Flabby Broccoli died in a hail of bullets. Bad news? The Friends have replaced Broccoli with a new leader known only as The Boss. We asked legendary lawman Judge Dredd for a comment. No criminal escapes the law. I am the law. 